Hi, this is Main News, your monthly update on macOS and iOS engineering. I'm Roman Mishenko, software engineer at CleanMyMac. This month we'll cover updates from open sourcing of Swift build to a new Swift extension for VS Code. Apple is steadily expanding Swift reach across multiple platforms. A significant step in this direction is open sourcing of Swift build, a high-level build system responsible for compiling Swift applications. It powers Xcode project, Swift Playgrounds, and Swift Package Manager. By making Swift build open source, Apple aims to simplify the build process for all Swift projects. One key benefit of this transition is making Swift build an alternative method for building a SVM project. This could streamline the development workflow, making it easier for teams to manage dependencies and build configurations. In the long run, Swift build has the potential to become a foundation for other IDEs that want to support Swift development, challenging Xcode's monopoly. Will this open the doors for new developer tools and improvements? It would definitely make the Swift ecosystem more flexible and attractive. By open sourcing Swift build, Apple also gives the community a say in the future. Developers can contribute enhancement and optimization, potentially accelerating Swift adoption in server-side applications, embedded systems, and even non-Apple operating systems. The Twist team recently shared their thoughts on this move highlighting how Swift Build could unify different build systems, including SPM and Xcode, into a single project graph. This integration could eliminate redundant efforts and provide a more consistent platform development experience. Twist plans to integrate Swift Build into its tools, giving developers more powerful and flexible project management options. Until now, the community has maintained the Swift extension for VS Code. However, Apple has officially taken over its development, intending to make it a fully featured extension that provides a flawless Swift development experience across all platforms – Mac OS, Linux, even Windows. With this update, the extension now includes better support for embedded platforms and other operating systems, making Swift more accessible beyond the Apple ecosystem. For existing Swift developers using VS Code, the transition will be simple. The previous version of the extension will automatically update to the new one, while the old extension will be renamed. So if you see the old one in your extension list, feel free to remove it. The new official extension will provide all Swift language features in VS Code, ensuring better stability, regular updates, and a more polished development experience. So what do you think about this big update? Do you use VS Code for Swift development? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. A recent blog post, Fun with Dynamic Structure in Swift, explore an interesting challenge many Swift developers face, working with dynamic data structures while keeping the code clean and type safe. Traditionally, developers rely on tuples and optional properties inside structures. However, as your code base grows, those approaches can become clunky and hard to manage. This is where dynamic member lookup comes into play. This Swift feature allows developers to access properties dynamically while keeping things organized and efficient. This means you can add more properties, combine them, remove and play around with them in any order you want. In case you need to change or add a new property, you will be able to do it on the fly without having significantly changed the existing code. It's a powerful and flexible way to handle evolving data models, perfect for scenarios when you don't always know the structure up front. Of course, this approach isn't without its downsides. While it's a fun and experimental way to push the limits, there is a few things to remember. Performance trade-offs, dictionary-based access is slower than direct struct properties, compile time overhead, more metadata means potential increase in compile time and memory usage. It's not the best practice for every project, while it's a cool trick it might be suitable for your production apps. Apple has officially introduced the iPhone 16e, a brand new addition to its lineup that replaces the SE models as the company most affordable iPhone. The iPhone 16e features a 6-in-1-inch display and it's powered by the A18 chip, though it comes with one less GPU core than the standard iPhone 16. Despite this, it still supports Apple intelligence. For photography, the device boosts a 48-megapixel fusion sensor, which Apple calls 2-in-1 camera. However, the device lacks dynamic island and camera control, key features found in the higher-end models. Interestingly, the iPhone 16e received Apple's first in-house modem, the C1, 
which, according to Apple, should improve energy efficiency. The iPhone 16e starts at $599 for 128GB version, which is $200 cheaper than the standard iPhone 16. Apple is once again at the center of major privacy controversy. The UK government has secretly ordered Apple to create a backdoor for accessing encrypted iCloud data. This was done under the Investigatory Powers Act of 2016. This directive specified targets Apple's advanced data protection feature, which uses end-to-end -end encryption to secure iCloud backups. If Apple complies, it would mean weakening its security measures, making user data more vulnerable to government surveillance and potential cyber threats. In response, reports suggest that Apple is considering pulling its encrypted storage services from the UK rather than compromising global user privacy. Privacy advocates have strongly criticized this move, warning that government-mandated backdoors set a dangerous precedent, potentially weakening the encryption worldwide and exposing private data to greater risks. This case is likely to fuel ongoing debates over the digital privacy, government surveillance and tech companies' responsibilities in balancing security with legal compliance. Apple has just introduced Apple Invites, a brand new app that makes events planning easier for iPhone users. With Apple Invites, you can create personalized invitations, manage RSVPs effortlessly, collaborate on shared photo albums and Apple Music playlists. One of the biggest advantages? Seamless integration with Apple's ecosystem. You can send invites directly via messages or mail, but while anyone can RSVP through the web, creating invitation requires an iCloud Plus subscription. The app is now available for download in the App Store. Have you ever struggled to find clear and consistent documentation on structured concurrency? Canadian developer Matt Massicott has created a concurrency glossary to help engineers navigate peer concept in multi-threading and parallelism. This glossary provides a precise definitions and explanations, making it a valuable resource for anyone working with concurrent programming. Grab the glossary link in the description below. Apple announced new security improvements for authentication token keys used with Apple Push Notification Service. Team scoped keys limit the can authentication keys to either development or production environments, adding an extra layer of security and ensuring keys are used only in their intended settings. Topic specific keys allow each key to be linked to a specific bundle ID offering a greater control, especially for large organizations managing multiple apps across different teams. Existing keys will continue to work across all push notification topics and environments. Updating to the new system is optional, so you don't have to embrace the update if you don't want to. For now, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss upcoming episodes. Let me know in the comments what do you think about these updates. Do you use Swift in VS Code? Thank you for watching and see you next month.